Okay, I just put the baby down for a nap. He's teething. He's 14 months old, so it's been a little kind of a trying period. And um, I'm not really getting very good sleep at night right now because of this either. Um, because teething pain means more awakenings for him, which pretty much means more awakenings for me and my wife right now. Um, so my sleep is suffering, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm getting seven to eight hours of sleep every night. Uh, I lay down in bed for at least seven hours a night. But that sleep is punctuated by interruptions. And so this brings me to the issue that it doesn't, it's not just about how much sleep you get, it's the quality of sleep you get. Because what I'm suffering from is sleep fragmentation. It basically means that I'm not able to get those deeper restorative levels of sleep because I keep getting woken up before I get down into them. So this descent into sleep fragmentations may be really sensitive to the way that sleep is depicted in the media and you know all around town. I mean I hear people say all kinds of things all the time that enforce this uh, wrong notion that, that we don't need sleep, that sleep is unimportant or it's unrelated to our health. You know, people say things like, I'll sleep when I'm dead, or uh, you know, sleep is for the weak. Uh, my favorite, real men don't sleep. You know, it's like sleep machismo. You know, it's culturally enforced. Uh, if, if we, you know, manage to not believe it ourselves, um, somebody is, you know, telling us that we're weak for, for wanting rest. You know, it makes me angry. Um, and, you know, because I'm suffering from sleep fragmentation, I'm actually more likely to fly off the handle. Um, I'm more likely to, to process negative emotions over positive emotions. I'm creating a new mythology where, where I'm angry all the time. Uh, you know, this is just one of the symptoms of sleep fragmentation. It's like the new baseline. You know, welcome to the new normal.